Welcome. We're going to start with the updates now, and this is section update one. And really what we want you to know here, we're going to go through one of the revenue procedures that was passed in 2016 that has the majority of the updates in it. As you, mo as you know, my name is Roman Basie. I am an attorney and CPA, and let's get started with this part of the program. So the very first slide, as of production as of today, we want you to know as we get into these updates that there is there has not been a tax bill passed yet, but there was a whole bunch of changes for 2017. Those changes are contained in Revenue Procedure 2016-55. You can find that on the IRS website. You can print off a copy of that booklet. I have a copy of that booklet in front of me and it's 30 pages front to back, double spaced. So just to give you an idea of what you're looking at as far as the tax law changes that we know of right now, and there will be more. We'll go over the purpose of the changes. We'll go over the changes themselves, the inflation adjusted items that we see. There are 63 items in all that are contained in these updates. And as we've said, Congress and the president will probably change a substantial amount more as we go over the next four years. So let's take a look first at the purpose. So this revenue procedure, it sets forth the inflation adjusted items for 2017 in section one. It also specifies the changes that it makes in section two. The 2017 adjusted items are in section three. The effective date is in section four, which is for tax years beginning in 2017. There's drafting information for you in section five and look at the author is the office of the associate chief counsel and section, we're gonna discuss section two in this presentation and section three will be discussed in the next five presentations. So taking a look now, let's look at slide number four and we're looking at section 101 of the Protecting Americans from Tax Hikes of 2015. This is known as the PATH Act, and so I'll refer to it throughout the rest of this presentation and the other update as the PATH Act. And if you look here, one of the first sections that was changed, and we're on point zero one of section 101 of the PATH Act, it changed, it made permanent the earned income threshold of $3,000, which is used to determine the child tax credit under section 24. Now, in an earlier part of the presentation, we talked about how you have a requirement to look at the earned income credit and to see if your client is eligible for the earned income credit. So this is another thing that you must make sure you're aware of is the $3,000 earned income threshold. Also, you know, you should understand the definition of, well, when, when do I get, when do my clients get this child tax credit and who's it for? A child can be qualifying if they meet six tests, age, relationship, support, dependency, citizenship, and residence. So to qualify, the child must have been under the age of 17 at the end of the tax year. They must be related to you, meaning your son, your daughter, your stepchild, foster child, brother, sister, stepbrother, stepsister, or get this, a descendant of any one of those. So you may have a, a brother's child that you're taking care of. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe your client's brother passed away and they're taking care of their child. That child can be a qualifying child as it relates to the child tax credit. That's the relationship test. They must be able to prove that they provided more than half of the support for that qualifying person. They must be able to claim them as a dependent on the tax return. They must meet the citizenship test and they must have lived with the client for more than half of the tax year. Although there are some limitations to that particular requirement. So that's the first change that we saw in this revenue procedure. 